R92 video. As I said in that video, this is the rifle that I wanted to trade the Rossi in for, which I did successfully. I didn't think I was going to get it because at the time when I asked about them, my gun store said they didn't have any. Um, and I was going to get the uh, Henry, which I didn't really want. I wanted this. Luckily, when I got there, they actually had one. So I traded in the Rossi on this. And just as a side note, I got a really good price for the Rossi. I was quite surprised, but considering how much work I'd done to it, um, how much I'd put into it, and you know, they could see that there was a lot of value there. So they, they gave me a fantastic price, actually. I have to thank all the guys at Hall's Firearms in Townsville. Great bunch of guys. If you need a firearm, you're in the area, just go and see them. Um, People still want the Rossies, you know? Insane, I know. Especially if you've watched my video, but yeah, they still want them. So yeah, they were quite happy to take it. But in any case, this is what we're talking about. We're talking about the Marlin 1894 in 44 Magnum. I still wanted the 44 Magnum. I haven't shot it yet. This is essentially a follow-up to my Rossi video. So I'm, it's a, I've done a couple of things to it already. You know, I can't help myself. Yeah, you know, I, I should have done, and, and I hate unboxing videos. I think they're a waste of time. So I have actually tinkered with it already. I, yeah, like I said, I can't help myself. And I'll tell you what I've done to it. Uh, they come with, a, with just a rubber, just a piece of rubber as the butt pad. And it's just, yeah, for a 44 Magnum, yeah, not, not my idea of ideal. So I've, I've actually, I'm waiting on a Packmeyer, um a proper fitting, you know, Marlin uh, shape pad, which is that got, it's got to come from the United States and it's actually on back order. You know, it's, it's really hard to get. I'm not really sure why. So I've actually grafted this is a a, uh, um, a Tika T3 pad that I've sort of grafted onto the onto it, which is not ideal, but it, it, it's a really nice pad. It's a, a limb saver, isn't it? Yep. So they're always good. Um, what else have I done to it? Uh, sights. I've knocked out both the, the front and the rear sights because I think, yeah, I don't know why companies are still putting out just rubbish sights on lever actions. They really are. Um, although I've got a, a Marlin SBL in 4570 and that comes with excess sights already on it. So, yeah. But I don't, and there's, the stock size that they come with are just, yeah, very rudimentary and, and really just garbage as far as I'm concerned. They should be coming out with XS or, or I don't know, Williams or, you know, one of the other, you know, good sight makers. Um, uh, yeah, so I'll put XS sights front and rear. Um, haven't, obviously, I haven't shot it yet, so, yeah, can't tell you how that's going to turn out. But um, my experience with the excess sights on the SBL are good, you know, for close in, they're okay. Um, and that, that's what this is for, I mean, let's face it, you know, beyond 50 metres and, yeah, you shouldn't be using a 44 mag as far as I'm concerned. I, they will go further, you know, it's got a lot of punch, but, yeah, it's a pistol cartridge, even though it is a Magnum. Um, so I've changed the sights. The other things that I will change is the trigger. And, you know, this is a, bit, a real bugbear for a lot of Marlin owners, and it is for myself too, the floppy trigger. I mean, look at that. It's just, it's just flopping around. That's, it's rubbish. You know, I don't, I don't know how Marlin just keeps putting this thing out. It's, it's, yeah, 
It's a, a real detractor. The, the one and only detractor for the firearm, in my opinion, and the sights. Um, so I've actually got a, a trigger happy, it's called, trigger coming, which is it's spring loaded, so it actually it doesn't flop around. It's still two piece. It's a two piece trigger. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the go is there, but anyway. Apparently Marlin used to put out a one piece trigger, which was just fine, and then they come up with this stupid thing, and they're still putting it out. I don't know what's going through their heads, really. Um, let's see. I'll do a small comparison compared to the Rossi where this really gets it right and the Rossi got it wrong. Number one is the magazine tube plug. On the Rossi, the only thing that is holding your rounds, the spring, the tube in place is that little screw. The, the, the magazine plug screw. So, and, and the thread is really microscopic and at least on my example that I had, that's all that was holding it in. There was nothing else holding it together. So, no wonder that thing stripped because you really had to put a heap of pressure against the barrel to, to hold it in place. Because there's, there's a small, um, yeah, little hole drilled into the barrel there to, where the screw, you know, fits into. And, yeah, it's just a really crazy, ineffective setup because I've heard of people you know, shooting the things and all of a sudden their plug magaz magazine spring and all the rounds just go bradoing out the front, which is not surprising. I mean, you know, I'm surprised it didn't happen to me. But um, where Marlin get this right is that in the actual mag tube and the barrel, there are slots, corresponding slots, mag tube and barrel, both at the, at the, at the band, the front band and at the cap here. So that screw that screws into the band and the cap here, that actually holds the magazine bar the magazine tube in place. N not this little screw. I mean, that's just, that's where Rossi, I just couldn't believe it. When I took the Rossi apart and saw that that's all that was holding it together, I was just oh, shocked, actually. I mean, <laughs> and I don't know if that's all Rossi's or my example was just a piece of garbage, which it was when I first got it because like I said with the Rossi, it was just two grooves ground into the barrel um, that were, I don't know what the story was with that thing. Anyway, I got rid of it and got this, so I'm really happy. Um, what else? Guess what? I could load 10 rounds with ease. Not a problem. Not like the Rossi. I had to chop the bloody magazine spring for the Rossi. Sorry about the profanity. Um, and, and I wasn't, my thumb wasn't getting carved to the, you know, <laughs> carved up like a piece of meat, uh, like with the Rossi, and and it cycled. I put 10 rounds in it and it cycled, cycled them all, not a problem. Couldn't do that with the Rossi when I first got it. So straight off the bat, you know, fantastic. I was <laughs> really, really wrapped. Um, a lot of people, are, I know that a lot of people are really down on Remington having taken Marlin over, and I understand that. And apparently uh, the first productions, the first years of production of, of Marlins under Remington was just atrocious. You know, I've, you know, I've seen a few of the YouTube vids and yeah, they were disgraceful. But I can honestly say um, they, they seem to have really gotten their act together because this thing's, yeah, can't say a bad thing about it. It's great, yeah, love it. And this is the second Marlin, Remington made Marlin that I've, that I've got. Um, the first one was uh, the SBL in 4570 stainless big loop yeah kick ass gun that is that's fantastic and this thing just yeah i love it you know just first impressions and the fact that you can cycle rounds through it no problems you can load 10 rounds through it no problems comes with sling swivels you know the basics yeah the sights are rubbish you know so it's not much better than the rossi really you know to be honest but uh, you know, aftermarket, because it's got the flat top receiver, side ejection, you know, you can mount easily other sides on it. That's the problem with the Model 92 design is, you know, top ejection. Yeah, that's the problem with it. So, I mean, Marlins in general, I think, are just fantastic guns. I, I just, yeah, I love them. My SBL is just fantastic. I'll do a, re a review of that later. Um, but I just wanted to do a, a heads up on where I got with the with uh, trading the Rossi in. Yeah, like I said, I got a really good deal. I won't tell you how much because that's between me and the gun shop. Um, 
and one of the other things, uh, one of the other things that I did that I all, and pretty much do to all my guns, and which is, I find a bit irritating, is that the woodwork on just about every rifle that I get does not have enough finish on it. You know, it, they're dry. The stocks are dry. The wood is dry. Yeah, it's it's got a finish on it, but it's, they're really dry. And for where I live, uh, and especially at the moment, I mean, I'm sweating like crazy right now. High humidity. I'm not worried about rain so much, but because I, I, I'm not really one to walk around the rain hunting. But yeah, if you're out there and it rains, well, so be it. You've got no choice. But if if you know, if I've got my druthers, I, I won't do it. But the humidity and you know, wood is porous, so it'll suck it up, you know, and move around. So the first thing I do, and the first thing I did to this one is take the the butt stock and the fore end off, and give them a really, really, you know, good treatment of true oil. I love that stuff, true oil in a can. You know, it's really easy to use. You just spray it on. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that True Oil does is just, I don't know if you can see, but it, it really brings out the grain. You know, it's just, it didn't look that good before I whacked, the, you know, a ton of True Oil on it. Now it looks really, really nice, you know, American Walnut, and it is Walnut, so I'm told. And it does look like Walnut, so, you know, that's another good thing. Where the Rossi just came out with some weird ass, you know, Brazilian hardwood that was just, you know, color stained. Wasn't even had no finish on it whatsoever. Um, what else do I have to say about it? That's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just really wrapped with it, you know. Uh, yeah. So one of the other reasons that I took the wood off is I wanted to see what sort of system they had to hold the magazine tube in place. Of you know, my fingers crossed. It's like, please don't tell me that they're using the same shitty system that. Rossi is, and it's not, they've got, you know, I mean, the, there's a slot machined in the barrel and the tube, that both at the barrel band and the, and the cap, uh, you know, properly, you know, not, there aren't any sharp, ridiculously sharp edges on this thing, it's actually finished really, really well. The, the fit um, and the finish, you know, like, like I said, the wood's dry, but just pretty much every rifle that I get is like that, so I, I like to go to town with them with uh, the true oil. The, the, the fit is, it's, it's actually quite good. I mean, that was one of the, the complaints that I heard a lot of people had with the Remington made Marlins. And, you know, I, I can't say a bad thing about it. It's great. Um, one of the, well, one side note actually is that, um, and I've seen quite a few people complain about this, and that is the, the safety on these things. You know, the cross bolt safety. This, that, that, that's on and the red red is missing when you push the other way you can see the red it means it's ready to shoot um yeah <laughs> I'm really bemused by that I mean it's a safety device you know and a lot of the traditionalists say oh you know that cross bolt safety I don't like it what part about a device that could possibly save yours or someone else's life don't you like I don't really understand that most firearms have safeties and I'm all for it you know and it's not hard to operate I mean god it's it's <laughs> you know it's it's pretty simple to operate and it works and I love safeties you know I come from a military background we had to have safeties on everything because people are stupid you know and they will accidentally let off around now and then and shoot someone it does happen so i don't have a problem with safeties I, I really don't know what the problem is with that i mean i know i know some people have actually gotten rid of the cross bolt safety and i think they put in a a, a, a um a saddle ring and yeah it's just some weird stuff like that which uh, i don't know what that's about um yeah so i don't have a problem with safety yeah good on them um, I mean, you know, they say, oh, back in the day, you know, didn't that? Yeah, back in the day, there wasn't so much litigation. You know, people weren't so ready to sue rifle, you know, manufacturers. Now they are, so it's quite natural that they should um, introduce something to cover their, you know, behinds. Um, and good on them. Yeah. So uh, that's pretty much it. I can't say a bad thing about it. I've taken it apart, had a look. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I'd advise anyone go out and buy a Marlin you know where are they made now Ilian 
New York by Remington. Yeah, go out and buy one. I, you know, this is the second marlin I've got. That's an eel in New York marlin, and they're fantastic. I love them. You'll notice that. Yeah, this is a bit embarrassing. The screw hole is missing the screw because um, I was <laughs> I bought a cheap pick rail and I was going to put a scope on it just to test out the accuracy with it, you know. And I wasn't going to keep the scope on it, but I just wanted, to, you know, do a serious accuracy test, with, accuracy test with it. Stupid me is cheap Chinese. Um, rail. Nothing wrong, wrong with the rail, but the screws. That just the tolerance of the screws was just bad. They were they were actually a little bit smaller. And what it actually did on this hull is, it didn't strip the thread. But what it's done is, um, it's actually just it um, was uh, just bent the threads over a bit. So they just need to be just needs to be cleaned up with a with a, a tap, which you've got coming again from the United States because it's just such a weird ass size like um, what is it 8 gauge it's, it's wire gauge tap 8 gauge tap and um, 40 40 threads per inch I think mean, it's just nobody zip, like nobody stocks it so I got that coming from Brownells in the States so um, yeah that's embarrassing real noob real beginner's mistake not testing out the screws but I tested a couple of them out and they were alright and sure enough one of them wasn't so yeah, idiot um, uh, you know, I am an idiot for doing that but in any case the thread isn't stripped it's still okay it just needs to get touched up a bit and then I'll put the other plug screw in there grub screw but um, yeah that's about it fantastic gun I love it yeah buy one don't, don't be afraid to go out and buy one I would you know I'd really like stainless because I do live in the tropics and phew, I gotta tell you, the uh, stainless really makes a difference here, but nah, can't get it. So here I am. I've got the 1894 in blue steel, and the finish on the like the steel work is looks great. You know, I, I like I said, I haven't got a bad word to say about it. I think it looks fantastic. So I can't wait to get it, have a shoot of this, and um, when I when I do go out and shoot it, I'll. Uh, I'll do another vid and, and tell you what the accuracy in that is like. No doubt it'll be more accurate than the Rossi. That was, yeah, that was terrible. Um, but uh, yeah, look, as soon as I get that trigger, I'm going to change that. That's that's nonsense. That's yeah. So the sights and the trigger. Aside from that, yeah, haven't got a bad thing to say about it. Um, so I'll see you again on the next vid. Thanks for watching, and. Don't be afraid to give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like it. If you don't, well, give me a thumbs down or give me a bad comment or insult me. I really don't care. So, uh, well, I do care, but, you know, I'm not going to be offended. In any case, that's it for now, and I'll see you guys later.